it's the equivalent of that person in your family who knows that little bit about IT and uh, gets that call at 9 p.m. because somebody's iPad can't, uh, can't do what they want it to do. What's happening guys, Dan Debenham here. This is the sort of thing that as a filmmaker or an editor, you get asked all the time and not by not by the th people you think you would get asked by, like clients and stuff like that and, 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 and you know paid work. This is the sort of thing that you get asked for by friends and family um, and just basically anybody who, who knows you can make films or can edit stuff. Um, and they and they just they just need your help to be able to put together what they want to put together. It's the equivalent of that person in your family who knows that little bit about IT and uh, gets that call at 9 p.m. because somebody's iPad can't uh, can't do what they want it to do, or they've got a problem with a PC or a laptop, and they're on the phone to you at 9 p.m. while you're trying to watch something on Disney Plus or Netflix, and you're having to talk them through not with nothing in front of you, the sort of keystrokes or menu structures on how to accomplish what they need to accomplish. It's the editing version of that. And that is the typical unique view job of uh, putting together a slideshow. And that's a slideshow of images. So you get that family person who comes and says, I've got all these great photos of my kids, or I've got these fantastic birthday thing that I want to put together. And it's these, I've got all these photos from throughout the last 10 years or whatever that we've, we've we've taken and I want to put them together to a slideshow with a bit of music on or whatever um, uh, can you do that for me and you end up spending your Sunday putting that together um, uh, and thinking oh my gosh why how have I managed to get to this point where I'm, I'm actually working on a Sunday for free um, to put together this slideshow well I'm here today to show you how we could do that really easy and really quickly um, because you're never going to get out of doing it because who's going to tell their aunt or their uncle or the gran or the grandma or the nan or whoever that may be. Nah, you're all right, thanks. I've got all the skills, but sort yourself out. You're not going to do that. So you're going to need to know a way of doing it in, that is as least painful for you as possible. So with that, let's jump into Premiere Pro and let's see how we go about doing this slideshow. Okay, first things first, what we need to do is we need to sit, do a little bit of setup. So what we have to do first is get ourselves into the assembly part of Adobe Premiere Pro. So we're not in the edit, we're in the assembly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our photos, when we drop them into our timeline, are in the right order and have got a few little things done to them already before we even attempt to start looking at making alterations and that kind of thing. So over in the assembly section, so if you don't know where that is, if you just come up to this top corner here, you'll see there's editing, color, effects, and so on, but assembly is one above those. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show this icons down here, um, and we're gonna put in icon view. And that just allows us to see the photos, and it allows us to uh, see what we're working with and how we're working with it. Now, we wanna order these photos in a particular order, and we wanna make sure that they uh, they go into the timeline in the order that we want them to go into and this is sort of the easiest place to do that because we can see all the photos and we can move them about as we need to if you can't move them about if we come down to here to where it says sort icons and just make sure user order is selected that will allow you to free hand move the images around on the in the bin and that allows you to order them up however you want them ordered so once I've got that done and dusted, and I can see that I've got different styles of photo here, um, but I, want, I don't want um, I images that are portrait to be next to one another, because I want to put some other images in there. So what I'm gonna do is drag that image across there. So I've got uh, landscape, portrait, landscape, 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 portrait, landscape, portrait, landscape, landscape. And effectively, that's what we've got now. We've got an order that we want them in. We're happy with how we're gonna go with that. Um, for this particular thing, I'm not going to go too in depth in trying to reorder them so they all look amazing um, because they're great photo tips anyway. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight all those photos, go to speed and duration, and we're going to change it so that we know how long these photos are going to stay on the timeline for. So in this case, it's five seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to four. So for those of you who don't know what that is, but time, but not not sort of au fait with the time code sort of thing. 
So you've got two double O's, that's your hours, your minutes, your seconds, and then your sort of frames, as it were, within those seconds. So what I can do now is grab all those images and just drag them straight into the timeline, and they are set in the order that I want them set in, and they are also set to a time that I want them set to. So let's do that now. We'll just grab all those images, like so, and then we'll just drag them across into there, like so, and then we can come up out of that into editing, and now into the editing section. As you can see, our first image down here is the image that we're looking at, and our second image, this one here, which is the one I'm looking at, third image is this girl in a box, and so on and so on and so forth. And that's basically, we've set ourselves up now, and they're all, all the same size, and they're all, so they're all the same length, they're all four seconds long, and they're gonna to continue to stay on screen for four seconds. But we've got issues. We've still got uh, black borders around some of these images because inadvertently, the images are all different sizes because we've taken on different cameras and so on and so forth. So there are things we need to do in order to sort of make that easier for ourselves. So what do we have to do? So what we're gonna do is make sure we do that in a really simplistic way. So we're gonna highlight all the photos, we're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna go to uh, scale to frame size. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna scale all the images up or down to the size of the frame that we're working with here. Um, which is going to be the sort of largest photo as it were. So we're going to scale those to frame size like so. Click OK and now they're all scaled to the right size. They're all basically in there. Now we've still got black bars around some of these images. Uh, this one particularly is fine, but the rest of them, as we can see next door, this one's obviously portrait, so it's got uh, a black bar down either side. And even some of the larger images like this one's got black bars, just minor black bars, top and bottom. Now there is obviously a way of sorting that out. I'm gonna do that as well to make sure that we at least get a pleasing look to this slideshow. But so far, we've only had to click a few buttons here and we've got a slideshow pretty much made. Um, we're just tweaking and adding bits to it now. And this has taken us a few minutes, five, 10 minutes max. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that the the ones that have got a tiny bit of black bar to them, um, that they're, they're not, we can eradicate that by just scaling that photo up. So what we can do is we can go to the effects control panel and we can scroll through to a photo that's got minimal black bars. Well, these, these ones seem to have, that we're looking at now, seem to have the minimal black bars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that photo on its own. I'm going to scale it up to say 105. Is it 105 or 104? Is that going to make it? Is it 103 even? What I want to do is I want to make it set at 104. So it's 104%. I want to make it just fit that frame. I don't want it to be super, super, super zoomed in. I just want to make a slight adjustment to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy that effect. I'm going to right click, I'm going to highlight all those, sorry, uh, and then I'm going to paste attributes on all the ones before it and after it. So we're going to paste attributes on all the ones before and after it, and that's given us stuff that's zoomed in. So we've got most of the photos now are all fit in place, but we've still got black bars down either side of some of those portrait ones. Okay, so what we now want to do is we want to just add a few little bits of effects to this to move this forward, so we're gonna um, we're gonna put a cross dissolve on this uh, um, timeline, just because we want to make sure that these sort of roll into each other rather than just flicking from one image to another. And the way we could do that is we can make sure um, that we've got our um, we can make sure that we've got our cross dissolve all set up and ready. Now, by default, the cross dissolve in uh, Premiere Pro is like 30 frames, which is like a, a second long, and I want to leave it a second. I don't think it needs to be any longer, um, but you can go in there and you can do that. And I'll just show you how to do that if you, if you need to do that. So we can go into um, Preferences. So if we go up to Preferences and then uh, Timeline, and there we go. So we've got, it's 25 frames actually, so we're going to second, so it's one second. So as you can see from here, 25 frames, one second. And at that point, you can then just click click to, click to seconds and then just change that to whatever, how many seconds you want your cross dissolve to 
uh, continue for. For me, I'm gonna leave it at 25 frames, which is one second in this case. Um, so I'm gonna click OK on that. And that's all fine. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across the effects to video transitions. And I'm gonna make sure that cross dissolve has a uh, blue square around it. And that denotes that it's the default um, effect that's gonna be used from within video transitions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control and A on the keyboard, which is a PC uh, equivalent of uh, Command A on a Mac. Um, and then I'm gonna press Control and D and that's gonna stick a cross dissolve straight in. Um, so I've highlighted all the clips and added a cross dissolve immediately to all those 10 photographs without having to go through and drop one on individually and all the rest of it. Uh, and that has just allowed us to do two clicks and get effectively everything selected and everything added. Now, what we also want to do is, uh, as you can see, they're all moving along and what have you. What we also want to do is we want to move this up in the timeline like so. So I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to duplicate it now as it is, as exactly as it is. And for the re that reason, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that I can cover that uh, portrait issue with the, the black bars down either side um, it, at a later point. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of movement to these photos. So we're going to select a photo, um, I'm going to come up here and we're going to get to the image at the beginning as you can see um, and we're going to add, add scale on and I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to add another scale on and I'm going to make it a hundred and so it just moves in ever so slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that. So I'm gonna copy that, highlight all those, paste attributes, and I'm gonna take off opacity and I'm just gonna, I'm just going to uh, copy over the motion side of things. So we're not doing the opacity because we don't need to worry about that. What we need to do is do the motion side of things. So I'm going to do that. And that's just going to add that little bit of movement in every single photo as they come in. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to highlight that bottom set of images that we just pasted over the top of. So we've basically got two sets of images. And I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to click nest. And I'm going to nest it and I'm going to call this um, uh, bottom images and that's just because it makes it easy for me so that's now gone green that's fine and we're all good there we know what we're doing with that but what I actually want to do is I want to add I want to make that a little bit larger so I'm going to come in here like this and I'm going to scale that up like so and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to effects and I'm going to add a blur. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to type in Gaussian. Blur, Gaussian blur, like so. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to that. And at that point then, I can then start to tweak the blurriness of this, like so. So we can see a little bit of the image through the blur. So we know that there's definitely an image there, um, but we're just gonna make sure that the image that we've got is clear uh, and picks off from the blur behind it. But it just stops you having that black behind each individual image that don't fit quite right. And that can be done for ones that go across the top or ones that go across the side. In our case, we've managed to make those photos fit, um, but in this case, uh, there are some that needs that extra bit of work. But there you have a nice little easy way of putting together a slideshow and after that obviously with the sound and all that kind of stuff you can obviously put music in there uh, or whatever you want to put on there uh, to just run along the bottom of it just to give it that little bit more of a, a sort of polished and finished sort of feel.
So as you can see, it was pretty simple. It's pretty easy to do. You can automate quite a bit of it um, by doing the setup bit at the beginning rather than going through each individual image. Um, and you can get it looking somewhat like, um, and then you can just, you know, do whatever you want with it sound wise after that. And it, it essentially just makes the job much easier for you. Uh, and it means that you get a bit of your Sunday or a bit of your weekend back rather than spending hours trying to figure out how you're going to do all these individual 10,000 photos that they send you. Um, and you've got it all sorted in a video within a few minutes and you can get it, you can get it done real quick. So with that, I hope this was useful. I hope you did find it interesting and I hope it does save you just that little bit of time and gets you, gets you to that barbecue a little bit quicker. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.